Hey everyone, welcome to my May 2020 plan with me video. I'm very excited to show you this month's theme, so let's get into it. For this video, I'm mainly using these four colors of Zebra Mildliner highlighters, as well as my Sakura Micron in 0.5 and my Tombow Fudenosuke brush pens. If you're interested in any of these pens, I will link them down below in the description. So for this month's theme, I decided to do like a honeycomb, bee, and daisy theme. I thought that it was perfect because it finally feels like spring around here and the colors make it super happy and cheerful. I started off by drawing these hexagons in little bunches scattered throughout my page. It's okay if they're random, I just tried to make them all the same size and um, I tried to make them all line up as much as possible. This step definitely took the longest throughout my entire setup, but I do think it's worth it and I really like how it looks in the end. After that, I'm drawing daisies throughout the page, um, sort of like overlapping and peeking out from behind the honeycomb. I thought about doing daisies just like as a completely separate theme, but I think the colors all go together and I knew I wanted to do honeycomb, but I also wanted to incorporate some flowers into this setup just because last April I did like a rainy theme and this is for May flowers. The last step I'm doing with my fineliner is drawing little bees and like a little loopy dash path behind them. Next I'm just going in with my different shades of yellow and or orange and I'm filling in each of the hexagons in one of the colors. I just chose to use three different colors of mild liners but feel free to use as many or as few colors as you like. I just thought that these three um, were in the same color family but also still gave a nice little contrast. So I go to school in LA but right now I'm currently back home in Seattle because of the coronavirus and quarantine which kind of sucks but on the bright side it definitely has given me more time to work on my art and my bullet journal and do a little more complicated of a setup like for this month. Opposite of my cover page I'm doing a few doodles and a quote I sketched out this drawing, it's supposed to be a beehive, and it says be humble, be loved, be kind, and I'm also drawing a few little bees. The last step, like always, is just to fill in with some color. I use this gold mild liner in like almost all my videos and setups, and it's amazing because I've had this pen set for as long as I've been bullet journaling, so like literally the past two and a half years and they still work perfectly. So, my liners are like some of my favorite products ever, and if you don't have them already, definitely check them out. They're a bullet journal essential. The next spread is my monthly calendar layout, and here I believe my boxes are six by six in my Archer and Olive dot grid journal, and I just used my mini 16 centimeter Muji um, ruler to make sure all my lines are perfectly straight. I've been doing Instagram and YouTube trackers for around the past year now and they're just to keep track of my growth from month to month. Now I'm doing the same process as I did with my cover page and I'm drawing a bunch of hexagons, daisies, and bees in all of the empty space around my calendar layout. May is going to be an especially busy month, probably one of the busiest in a while, just because I have finals in the beginning of the month and then at some point I need to go back to LA to pack up all my stuff from my dorm, and I also decided to take summer classes so those start up towards the end of the month as well. It's really times like this, looking forward when I'm glad. I have my bullet journal as a way to keep myself organized and be able to plan ahead for everything. So th in the next step, I went ahead and I highlighted the top row of boxes um, with my three different accent colors and I believe I forgot to write in the numbers, like the days, um, in this video but I went ahead and did it after my bad. Also, if you're curious, when I was filling in the hexagons, I didn't do it randomly, although you can, it would definitely look just as good, but what I did was I made it so the colors were never like next to each other, um, and so you just do like one row, one color, one row the next, and because 
the hexagons are offset. You never have two hexagons of the same color that are right next to each other. The next spread is my mood tracker. I always love seeing my mood trackers get filled out throughout the month and this is no exception. I think it'll look really really cool by the end of the month when it's done. For this I just drew out 31 hexagons and then each day I will fill out um, the corresponding box with a color depending on what my mood was that day. Also I just have to apologize for the inconsistent lighting throughout this video. I kind of have a weird setup right now for how I'm shooting and in this video the sun was moving a lot and it got on the place where I was shooting so sorry about that. My last step for this page was to assign colors for each of the different moods and I'll definitely post a picture of this spread probably towards the end of May or the beginning of June with it all filled out. On the opposite page per usual are my habit trackers. So for this month, I'm kind of mixing it up a little and I'm adding a few more different things that I'm going to track. First though, I have to write out all of my calendar layouts. This is always the most painful part of any of my setups, um, but I've gotten pretty efficient and fast at it and it's over quickly. So the things that I'm going to be tracking this month are if I drank enough water, if I worked out, if I did my ab routine, if I journaled in my journal every day, if I studied, if I listened to a podcast, if I took my vitamins, if I didn't spend money, and then if I completed my like Adobe class that I'm taking. And how this works is if I complete the habit on that given day, I'll just draw a little circle around it so I know if I did it or not. One of the things I like most about habit trackers is that they're so individual. You can choose to track as many things you want or as few things, um, and you have complete control over what you want to focus on. The next page is my brain dump page. I like to keep it pretty simple and save a lot of space, so I have room to write down all of the big tasks and things I want to get done during the month. Another thing I really like about this theme so far is that it's not really complicated at all, it just takes a little more time commitment, but in terms of drawing, all the shapes are very simple, like hexagons, simple flowers, and bees. And so it's pretty easy to recreate if you have the patience. The very last spread of this setup is my weekly spread. Now I'm only using one page and it only has two days because I like to start my weekly spreads on Sunday and May starts on Friday, so I'm doing Friday, Saturday on this one page, and then on the next page I can start a completely new week. Luckily though, this gives me lots of space to write down any of my tasks, appointments, um, things I want to do, and then also it leaves room for a lot of doodling and drawing as well. Again, after I finish going over everything with my fine liner, I'm just going to color in all of the hexagons, bees, flowers, and add some highlights and call it a day. So here's my final flip through. I'm pretty pleased with how this theme turned out. I've been meaning to do it for a while and it was a lot of fun to make for you guys. Um, if you have any recreations, please tag me on Instagram at a bullet journal a day and let me know what you thought down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.